What's up guys? It's your boy Bevan. Hope you guys are having a great day. And as you guys know, I'm gonna be doing requests for the next few projects. I've been scrolling the comments on my older videos, specifically the Liberator Sword one. And then I got this request from at Visaru TV, which reads out, Can you do the sword from Claymore Manga? To which I replied, Sure, I'll do that one day. Well, guess what, fam? Today's the day. Let's build that Claymore. So I'm gonna start the day off nice and easy by jumping into Fusion and then quickly drawing this model of the Claymore. This sword is actually not hard at all. There's just like a little bit of irregular parts here and there but i rate the overall difficulty of this thing to be something like a 3 out of 10 and so i was able to complete this model within i don't know about like 30 minutes this thing is just pretty meh pretty easy this is probably like one of the more easiest models i've done so far now because this sword is so freaking huge i'm gonna be incorporating an aluminum rod to make sure that this sword has enough strength to carry its own weight now that I have a reference that very closely resembles the sword design from the anime, I'm gonna be like cutting it into smaller pieces and then I'm gonna extrude each part as an STL file so we could like open it in Cura. Hey. Now, Cura is a slicing software that I usually use to prepare all my parts for 3D printing. So now I'm just gonna quickly like drag the parts we modeled in CAD and then just like orient it on the print bit then tweak a little bit of settings and then we should be pretty good to go oh and by the way uh if you guys are interested in learning more about like the CAD process as well as the slicing process i'm gonna make i'm gonna be making a separate video that dives much deeper into the technical stuff in that for example like the CAD, the cam and a little bit of my con design considerations as well as probably electronics in the future as well because you know those things just take far too much time to do in this video i'm just gonna go and leave you guys with this little bit of a 3d printing montage and i'll see you guys when all the parts is done rise and shine boys we got a freaking sword to weld all right uh Remember last time I told you guys that I was gonna shove an aluminum rod down there, right? Well, there she is. This thing's about like two meters long. I'm not sure if I could get everything on camera though, but I'm about 175 centimeters taller. And this thing is still significantly taller than me, bro. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, we're gonna cut this aluminum profile just about as long as the whole length we specified back in CAD, which is about 142 centimeters. So I've already marked it down right here. I'm just gonna use the saw on my Swiss army knife to do it because I don't actually have like a proper saw. I suggest you get a better tool for this or maybe just like walk into Home Depot and just request for your aluminum to be cut at about that length too. Well, save you some time or whatever. So as you guys can see right here, I've already cut the aluminum rod just about as long as the blade. Just slightly short of it, but it's just about like the exact length that I specified in the cat. Uh, now we can just go ahead and skew the entire blade with the rod and then continue with the welding afterwards. And then I think you might find it a little bit difficult inserting the aluminum rod into it. You can try and uh, clean up the whole entry by uh, heating it with a soldering iron or probably just use a match or something. You know, in my experience at least, the hard part actually comes uh, when you're trying to shove in the rod into the parts. After that, the pieces will just move and slide like butter. So, this is what the claymore looks like once you piece it together. It's motherfucking huge. Well, that's just expected of a sword that nearly finished one spool of filament. This, my boys, is what you call a. I have enough of that shit. Let's get welding. Now for the parts around the handle, this part is gonna be like a little bit crucial here. Uh, 
I think the world needs to be like far deeper so we have like a much higher surface contact or whatever whatever that thing is called or at least what I'm trying to say is that so that we have like more surface sticking with each other I tried like a uh, welding up to like a five millimeter tip from it it looks absolutely disgusting but don't worry we're gonna patch it up with some leftover filament afterwards oh man i got a shit ton to clean up afterwards So guys, after about four hours of welding and filling in some random big assholes, finally got the entire claymore welded, uh, welded and pieced on together. I'm pretty glad with the way the structure turned out so far. Uh, it looks pretty solid, looks pretty rigid. Alright bro, so uh, I feel like taking this baby outside just for one quick swing. I just want to test my theory if the aluminum rod really is going to make this thing like super strong as fuck or not. I hope I'm right because... If I've already spent like one week worth of work into this thing, if it doesn't, I'ma be fucking sad. So uh, here goes nothing. See that bro? Ah, that was pretty good. And now, it's time for step four. Sanding. Ah, uh, let me just quickly flip the camera real quick bro. <laughs> ah, there we go, that looks better. So, uh, oh, even though we basically have like 90% of the claymore done at this point, we just gotta paint it to finish it off, right? But look here, bro, do you want this kind of finish? Obviously not, right? Well, that's why we're gonna have to clean this thing off. I gotta say, I'm not that good of a welder. And so there are areas here that are not very even. There are some surfaces that uh, because I applied too much heat, ended up like melting downwards and then creating a few little holes and then in order to get it flat we're gonna have to like send a shit ton of material and at that point our sword is gonna be unbelievably concave now wouldn't it which is why we're gonna have to fill in these holes well obviously we could totally fill it in by adding some more heated filament onto it but that's easier said than done because honestly why spend that much effort when you can just fuck it up with some good old plastic putty shout out to my pa for teaching me about this life hack so basically plastic putty are like two part materials one is the filler and then the other one is the hardener so basically you mix these things together and then you basically just rub it all over the holes that you want to patch and then it should basically just mold itself into place nice and easy which makes this like a really good solution if you for example will shred a little bit too much material off your projects and then you just want to add a little bit extra meat to it so yeah plastic putty all the way now i gotta warn you though this thing omits some pretty nasty smell so make sure you're doing somewhere where your neighbor's not bitching about it all right so I think I got everything patched up where necessary. Now, it's time to get to the real business. Let's clean this thing up. So uh, here's a few tools we could use. Here I've got a delta sander. This is basically what you can use to get like a much larger surface finish. Uh, you just gotta like uh, turn it on and just swerve it around. And it'll basically smoothen things up for you. But recently, I've actually got myself into like the more traditional hand files. Honestly, this thing actually serves the same purpose as the delta sander right here. The only thing is that uh, it's manual, but so far I found out that uh, the hand file actually has one advantage over the Delta Sender. This thing is actually a rigid piece of steel, right? Meanwhile, the Delta Sender is basically just sandpaper on a vibrator. Bro, I hope that doesn't get taken out of context on my own.
Well, I guess uh, if there are areas that you really need flat, go with the hand file instead. I think you'll find it much easier to like focus on the parts in which the, de the delta center would just slip and uh, turn into like more convex or concave. So well, now let's just quickly shred as much dirt as possible off this thing with the sander as well as the hand file and then uh, see what happens. Alright, now that I got like most of the welded areas flattened out with the hand fog, I'm gonna swap to my sander and then uh, just get the entire surface of the blade as smooth and even as possible. Alright guys, so a little bit of update here. Uh, I've already flattened out the majority of the blade at this point. It's mostly nice and flat. I already tried pointing it to the light source and what I can see, I'm pretty satisfied with the straightness at this point. Now we can quickly finish things up with some Dremel. We can use the tool to touch up on the smaller areas of our Delta Sander and hand file to not be. guys it's 11 40 p.m right now but look at this i finally got the entire thing sanded down the entire blade is already nice and straight and then i'm pretty sure i've already sanded down every single detail especially those disgusting weld marks that we got from the last process and now this thing is ready for painting but i'm gonna do it tomorrow because i want to fucking crash so bad right now all right morning y'all it's ya boy f***ing <laughs> dog bro so uh, first things first, I'd like to start the day off using one of these filler primers. It's basically just like a base coat for painting a type of paint that has this property to like flatten out the surface even more in case we miss a little bit during the sanding. If you're looking for primers, I highly recommend looking for one that has like filling properties in it because it will actually like cover up for your misses during your painting. For example, if there's like an area where you haven't actually painted it that flat, if you like spray a lot of this thing, this is gonna like cover it up for that mist. So yeah, I think it's pretty handy. Now without further ado, let's just quickly get to work now, shall we? Now, uh, I don't know about you guys, but personally for primers, I prefer to spray it up close with about like a five centimeter distance from the object. Even though it says on the label, it should go for around 25. The reason for that is because I personally think like the spread, the spread that the cap actually gives is a little bit too wide, which causes like most of the particles to actually miss and then uh letting most of it go to waste so i personally like prefer to spray it up close which would then cause it to blob but that's fine anyways because this thing has filling properties and i think it should just like seep to like the uneven holes that we might have might have missed during the setting process that's personally just my preference you got like a better idea out there to like fill holes and not spending too much on these uh definitely let me know in the comments guys i finally got the entire sword uh coated up with the primer now this actually looks more like a real sword compared to that retarded red and white plastic patchwork now isn't it now all we gotta do is just wait for this thing to dry and then we should be good to move on to the next paint all right so a little update guys so the primer here is already dry and now we can move on to the main colors if we look at the reference picture on google there are like four colors on this thing which is uh red black silver and gold I'm gonna start things off with the color that's gonna uh, fill the majority of the blade, which is silver. I'm gonna move on with the red on this uh, little engraving right here with this new black on the handle. Then finally, we'll put the chrome last on the pommel as well as the handguard. I might be wondering, like, why am I doing the gold last? Well, here's the thing. The gold paint is a chrome paint. In my personal experience, I find chrome paints to be a little bit f***y sometimes. Because you see, in my first project, I did like the chrome paint first and then I put black on top of it. And then the chrome layer would simply not let any other paint on top of it. So once it's dry, it would literally peel off clean like it's never been there at all. So yeah, from that moment on, I learned my lesson to uh, do the chrome paint at like the very final step. So yeah, let's just get straight on with the sil silver now, shall we?
guys you can see right here i've got the entire blade length covered in silver paint already now we just gotta wait for this thing to dry before we move on to the black coat or do we though? You see, if we actually be a little bit careful, we can actually start painting the handle area without touching the blade at all. So why not just double down in that? And then by the time this paint dries, the handle will also be dry, which save us some time. So uh, let's go fire this baby up, shall we? Alright guys, so I'm finally back in my bedroom and now as you guys can see here like black paint and the silver paint is already dried out and now I think it's pretty safe to start applying some masking tape because we want to filter this color out so that we don't end up spraying the red and gold paint on the places we don't want. What I'm going to be doing here is pretty simple. I'm just going to apply a bunch of uh, tape on the lower section of the blade and I'm just going to cut out this shape of the engraving and for the handle we're just going to do it just enough so that we have a little bit of clearance for the gold paint later on. Oh no. Sadly, by the time I uh, finish wrapping up the sword with masking tape, it actually starts rain. I guess we're gonna have to wait until tomorrow to finish the rest of the sword. Lol. Hi, boys. So, it's the next day. You can see here, like, the weather's all nice and sunny. That's just perfect. Let's just quickly finish out, like, the last two paint on the claymore. So, let's just quickly finish this and spray some red on the engraving area. And then quickly just top the remainder with gold and then that's basically it we're done with the claymore and once the paint is dry we can just peel the masking tape and the claymore is finally done all right all right so there she is bro this 150 centimeter long claymore holy shit it's freaking massive now i'm honestly like pretty satisfied with the paint job at this point like check the silver out bro this shit actually like reflects uh, reflects like pretty damn well just like real metal get flashed bro and then if you guys are wondering just how big this sword really is, like I'm about 177 centimeters tall. I'm just gonna like uh, move back a little bit. Here's the claymore on the ground. This is me standing. It's just about like as tall as my nose right here. Thing's huge, bro. But yeah, since this is plastic, I'm still able to like wield it with one hand. Probably sway it a little bit. It'll just be like slower compared to the standard long swords I usually build. But honestly, bro, after swinging it for a while, I'm actually, this actually does make my forearm a little bit sore. It's, it is kind of heavy, not gonna lie. And quite honestly, I didn't exactly expect to be able to build a sword this big because uh, I've already broken a few of my long swords because like maybe I swung it too hard or it simply just crashed into something and it broke, which made me come up with the aluminum rod trick. And I'm just really happy to see it worked out just fine and it's able to like hold this much weight onto a 3D printed sword. It's absolutely insane. So uh, y'all know the deal. New sword. Let's go outside and take it for a spin now, shall we? So guys, that was my 3D printed Claymore build. I hope you guys enjoyed the result of how it turned out. If you guys do, definitely do leave a like and subscribe. And also, do comment down below on what else you want me to build. And I'll see you guys in my next project. Until then, see you later.